Hey everyone, I wanted to make this quick video of, um, I got a question uh, from a subscriber. Essentially, she is in between potentially buying a Hyundai Nexo, which is another one of the other hydrogen cars. There's only two on the market so far, or as of now, uh, Toyota Mirai and the Hyundai Nexo. The Honda Clarity did have one, and I believe those were the three. Uh, but anyway, um, she's split. Um, she's in her buying decisions stage. And um, I thought this would be a great time to um, not only give like some general car buying advice, but I think there are a couple things that are unique and should be emphasized a bit more when buying a hydrogen car. Um, so I'm gonna go over those today. Um, I hopefully will cover everything. I won't cover everything in terms of like what factors to buy or what factors to consider, but I'm gonna um, try to do my best from my personal experience um, what factors you should possibly um, put a little bit more effort and um, uh, work into finding out. So, uh, first thing, uh, well, I'll come, let me go over some basic car buying stuff that um, I think I'm pretty um, knowledgeable. And I'm not, maybe not the best, but um, I do enjoy cars in general. So I feel like um, I do know more than most. I may not know everything, but. Um, here's here goes obviously the price is a given um, reliability um, actually I'm gonna go th over that in a second but um, price how much is it gonna cost what's the MPG or essentially how many miles how much does it cost per mile I feel like that'll matter to most people unless uh, you're just buying this for the fun of it um, I would say the maintenance What's the maintenance look like? Um, how much is it estimated to cost? How big are the tires? Who do you have to go service the car? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So looking into that. Um, and then not related to gas necessarily. Actually, let's just go into the hydrogen stuff. Things you should look into, I think you should look into more than what you would normally do for any other car. I mean, I'm mainly talking um, internal combustion engines. So uh, first thing I want to point out is I'm sure everyone's top of mind for those that own it or those that are considering owning it is the infrastructure. I think that's the biggest elephant in the room. Um, I have my opinions on where it's going to be, but generally speaking, I would say that is a huge factor to consider. Do your research, not just from my channel, um, from other people's experiences, see how it is and how it could potentially fit into your lifestyle. I would say my personal experience you should not buy this car if this is going to be your primary form of transportation and you need this to go to work um, consistently. Unless you are, unless you have a hobby or you like listening to ebooks and you just stay at the station, you're okay with that once in a while? Sure, but most people probably not. So consider the infrastructure. What's the availability like? And you have to do a little bit of forecasting. How is it going to, how is it going to look in the future? I know on um, the hydrogen map in California, there is um, kind of stations to be built that are built and all that stuff. So take a look at that and see how it looks in your area. Second big elephant in the room is the fuel prices. So hydrogen currently, as of today, it is August 25th. Um, I've seen reports of True Zero stations being $36 a kilogram. Um, which essentially means you're probably gonna look, you're looking at roughly a um, hundred sixty plus dollars for a full tank, um, and a full tank will generally I know Toyota advertises a four hundred two miles or something. I think the majority of the people that drive this car um, range anywhere from three hundred to three forty with AC on. So I think that's a good ballpark, but consider that, look at the prices, where are they gonna be? I will say from my short period of ownership, which is about a year and a half, um, when I first bought, got the car, the hydrogen generally was $17 a kilogram. Now it is 36 and then not too long ago, it was 30. So it, from my experience, it went from 17 to 22 to 26 to uh, 30 and then now 36. So it, this is just in a time frame of a year and a half or so. So consider that. So again, first thing, the infrastructure. Second, tied to that is the cost of hydrogen. Um, you're gonna have to do your own due diligence, but from my personal experience, 
it's something you're gonna be vulnerable to. Um, it's not like there's a ton of competition in terms of hydrogen stations and costs and all that stuff. I'm not gonna get into that, but essentially it's something to really consider. All right, third is gonna be an interesting one, but car insurance. This is a big one. You should be doing this with any car purchase, hydrogen or not, because uh, it goes, it plays a pretty significant factor when you factor in all the costs and operating costs of, of, of using a car. Um, Hydrogen cars, I can tell you for the Toyota Mirai, I would imagine it's the same for the Hyundai Nexo. I haven't proven that, or I don't have the data, but I can tell you from for the Toyota Mirai, insurance is quite expensive, especially if you live in an area that's not quote unquote safe or super safe according to insurance standards. Um, the rate that I got, I got 100,000, 300,000, um, I think comp collision, uninsured motorist, I think I have 30, 60, something like that. So definitely above the minimum required if you have a loan on a car. And I will say for a, a certain address, I got quoted, major, most addresses, I got quoted $180 to $200 for the policy. That same exact policy, same company, um, in a quote unquote green area or a safer area, uh, was $98. Same exact policy, same car, same everything, just a different address, half the price. That is the first time I've ever seen that. I've seen, obviously insurance rates can vary uh, between the areas, but half is mind blowing. So that's something to very much consider when owning this car insurance rates can vary drastically. And as you might imagine, um, if you get in a, this is going on to point number four, is repair. Um, whether you get in a fender bender or you have some sort of maintenance or maintenance issue, fender bender, you're extremely limited in uh, the places you can go. And I think that's pretty obvious, but that's something to consider. If you have an issue with the car, you cannot go to some mechanic um, that can do it cheaper. It's, you're probably going to dealership, uh, to do all your maintenance. You're doing, to do all your maintenance, your, uh, car repair, collision stuff. Um, uh, most likely you're going to have to check in with, um, uh, a dealership. Most likely if it's a small fender bender, maybe not, but that's something to consider. If there is, God forbid, you're in a situation where you get in an accident or someone bumps you, just think about that. I think the parts, I believe, as well, similar to other car situations, are slow. This is a very unique car. They don't have a lot of parts on hand. Um, so you might have longer wait times as well. So that's number four. So like essentially damage to the car. Um, I think that's something you have to really emphasize. So again, uh, infrastructure, hydrogen prices, insurance and then if you were to get in some sort of damage situation it might take a little longer another piece is the resale of the car i know this is extremely hard to calculate um i did when i purchased this car i estimated that i would probably get anywhere from eight to twelve thousand dollars after ownership and ownership i targeted about 3.67 years um but you want to consider who who's going to buy this car? Who are you going to sell it back to? So you can obviously do private sale. And I feel like that market is extremely niche. And for the people that are willing to go through a private sale for a hydrogen car are probably pretty slim. I think it's fair to say that. And the dealerships that are taking on these cars, they have to make a profit too. So like, what does that look like? Um, take, do your research, take a guess, but it's not a just go to some dealership and do a trade-in. You could probably get a trade-in if you're buying another car, whether that be through Toyota or not, but the probably the price you're gonna get is gonna shock you. I would say dealerships need to make money too, so if they're selling it at 10,000, they're probably gonna wanna buy it from you for like seven, maybe six, because they need some room in there because these cars are not moving brand new, so who knows? And especially with the infrastructure and news on uh, hydrogen cars right now, I don't see many people joining that train. So another thing to consider is the resale value. And this one, this factor actually is 
really dependent on your goals with the car, whether it's a Hyundai Nexo or a Toyota Mirai, are you planning on keeping this car long term? If so, yes, you have to consider fuel costs or after you run out of that 15K uh, fuel card. But another thing is maintenance. I know like the filters you have to swap out for the hydrogen car, all that. This kind of goes back to the collision uh, stuff, but you're going through a dealership probably 100% of the time, unless there's some third party repair and maintenance shop that I don't know about. Um, but yeah, you're going to a dealership, you're paying dealership prices for maintenance. It's going to be expensive. It's kind of uncharted territory. If something goes wrong, that is major. Um, yeah, it, you're, you're left holding the bag. And you're going to have to pay for it. So just be ready for that. If your plan is to keep it ex beyond the, the warranty, me personally, I am not going to keep this car longer or m not much longer um, than probably at this rate, three and a half years or so total. Um, I'm essentially after this fuel card runs out, I'm, I'm going to try to unload it immediately, if not soon after that. So, um, these fuel prices just don't make sense. That's probably for my, for my take. Um, but if you're keep planning on keeping the hydrogen car a long time, consider that as well. This ties into the infrastructure. I forgot to mention the infrastructure is very limited, not just in no overall capacity, but location, uh, just volume of locations. You're very limited on where you can go. That's why Toyota offers 21 days rental or three years for those that are buy a new Toyota Mirai. Um, Hyundai, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I'm sure they have some sort of program like that. But essentially what I'm trying to say is if you plan on using this car to go on road trips or whatnot, know that you are limited. This car will not do that for you. Um, you just can't do it. So it's kind of Going back to point one, uh, can't do that. Another thing are the tires. Obviously with any car, uh, you are gonna have to swap the tires most likely eventually, but uh, currently these runner are running 235, 55 R19s, which are not super unique. But the thing I wanna point out with the tires is that this car is extremely heavy. Or not extremely, it's heavy. Um, so tire wear is going to be more than just say a uh, Corolla, a Camry, all those things. This car weighs much more. There's much more resistance uh, in these tires. So you're going to have to swap out tires more often. Um, obviously, this is extremely dependent on how you drive, but um, weight is a big factor um, in that. So you're probably going to be swapping out tires more often than you think. Um, obviously, this there's a lot of factors at play here, but something to consider the weight of the car. I hope that helps you in terms of isolating certain factors that you should take care of, or you should look into more if you're considering buying a Toyota Mirai or a Hyundai Nexo. Obviously do your research outside, like general car research, price, what are the financial incentives, um, all that stuff. But on, I just want to really highlight a lot of the stuff that you should probably, you may have overlooked or you may look into normally, but you should look into maybe a little bit deeper. Um, so yeah, uh, the biggest things for me that I found surprising was the insurance, which was extremely shocking. Oh, one more thing, Billy Mays here, just kidding. Um, the one, another thing to consider is that yes, you're for in this particular case and the Hyundai Nexo, you're getting a great deal in terms of discounts. Uh, I think currently for the XLE, you get $22,000 off. And I think for the Hyundai Nexo, the top trim, you get $30,000 off regardless. Registration is based off the MSRP of the car. So in this particular case, registration is about $700 a year. I'm based in Southern California. Uh, it's $700 a year. So you're not paying based after the discount. Consider that. I know it's very simple. Uh, something I overlook personally. I don't know if everyone else considered that, but just know that factor that into your annual cost of operating this car insurance the registration is gonna be significant it's seven hundred dollars a year for the hyundai i believe it's a little more so it might be a little more than seven hundred dollars a year but um yeah something to consider so anyway i hope this video was helpful um but i will see you on the next one